Hello all, welcome to the seventh session of the SET series. In this episode, we are going to talk about quadratics, especially in the context of discriminants, right? So let's say we have this question, uh, kx squared minus 2x squared plus kx plus 4 is equal to minus x minus 1. So this is the equation given of a quadratic function. And we have to find the values of k for which this equation will have no real solutions, right? Let's take it forward. So we know that the standard form of a quadratic equation is given by fx is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. Right? This is the standard form of a quadratic function. And we know that the two roots or the two solutions of this equation are given by x1 is equal to minus b plus b square minus 4ac divided by 2a. That's the first root. That's the first solution. And the second solution is given by minus b minus b square minus 4ac divided by 2a. I'm just using the quadratic formula which we all know, right? So this is the first solution and this is the second solution of this quadratic equation, correct? Now, uh, the term inside this square root, right, b square minus 4ac, this term here, this is nothing but the discriminant, right? This term, this whole entity, b square minus 4ac, it is called as the discriminant, right? Now, we have talked in the past that the square root of a negative number is not defined in the real world. Right? The square root of a uh, negative number uh, comes into the imaginary world. So when b square minus 4 ac, this whole entity, this discriminant, the value of this would be less than zero, right? that will make this term imaginary and hence the overall root imaginary. Same thing here. right? If we notice this quadratic formula, right? everything in these two roots is the same except of this plus and minus. Right? Everything else is the same. Coming back to the point, right? when b square minus 4ac becomes less than 0, this term becomes imaginary because the square root of a negative number is not defined in the real world. Hence, the, each of these two roots become imaginary. When b square minus 4ac is equal to 0, right? the square root of 0 would be 0. So it will be minus b plus 0 divided by 2a or basically minus b divided by 2a. And the second solution would be minus b minus 0 divided by 2a or essentially minus b divided by 2a. So when b square minus 4ac, this discriminant is zero, each of these two solutions will be the same, right? The last point, when b square minus 4ac is greater than zero, right? Suppose this value is greater than zero, then we will have some value of the square root and hence we will have two different real solutions, right? So just to summarize, right? Just looking at the quadratic formula here for a quadratic function, when the discriminant, this value b square minus 4ac, when that value is less than zero, each of these solutions will be imaginary. When the discriminant is equal to zero, each of these solutions will be the same. When this discriminant is greater than zero, each of these two solutions will be distinct real solutions. Okay. Now let's go back to this question wherein our first step would be to convert that into the standard form, right? Bring everything to the left side and write that in the standard form of equation. Identify our a, b, and c, and then find the value of the discriminant. Let's see what I mean by that. Okay. So let's convert this quadratic equation into the standard form, bring everything to the left side, and write this in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. So bringing it to the left side, we do plus x here, and we do plus x here, uh, we do plus 1 here and we do plus 1 here, right? So on the left side we have kx square minus 2x square plus x plus x is like plus 2x and plus 5 is equal to 0, correct? Now we will have to consolidate the like terms, right? We have two x square terms which can be combined together or uh, consolidated together 
to form A, to find A. So we take x squared common and we get k minus 2, right? I'm talking about these two terms, right? We can take x squared common and then we have k minus 2 plus 2x plus 5 is equal to 0. So now we have reduced the given equation in the standard form wherein our a is the coefficient of x square which is k minus 2 in this case, right? This is the coefficient of x square. So k minus 2. Uh, b is the coefficient of x which is 2 in this case. So b is equal to 2. And c is the constant term which is 5 in this case. So we have identified our a, b, and c's. The question said we have to find the values of k for which this equation has no real solutions or basically this equation has imaginary solutions and we just saw that for any quadratic equation to have no real solutions, the discriminant has to be less than zero or basically b square minus 4ac has to be less than zero. So let's plug in that here. b square minus 4ac is less than zero b is 2 so b square is 4 minus 4 times a is k minus 2 times 5 is less than 0 right which gives us 4 minus we can multiply 4 and 5 together first to get 20 and then k minus 2 is less than 0 and then we expand it so we get 4 minus 20k plus 40 is less than 0, 4 plus 40 is 44, so 44 minus 20k is less than 0, right? We bring 20k to the right side to make it positive, so essentially we get 44 is less than 20k, we divide by 20 on both sides, and finally we get k is greater than 44 over 20, or 2.2, right? 22 over 10, which is 2.2. So essentially what we have done is that we have reduced our given equation in the standard form, identified our a, b, and c, and put in the condition of v square minus 4ac is less than zero, because the question was asking us to find the values of k for which there are no real solutions. And when we solve this inequality, we finally get k is greater than 2.2. So essentially, right, for all values of k which are greater than 2.2, the discriminant will be less than 0, hence making the equation to have no real solutions. Okay, so just to quickly reiterate what we discussed in this session, right, the discriminant of a quadratic function is given by b square minus 4ac, right? This value is called as the discriminant. Now there are three scenarios which we talked about. Uh, either this discriminant could be greater than zero, or it could be equal to zero, or it could be less than zero, right? When this discriminant is greater than zero, right, our parabola will have two real solutions. It will actually cut the x-axis at two real points. So these are the two real solutions of the parabola or of the quadratic function in case when the discriminant of that function is greater than zero, right? When the discriminant of a quadratic function is equal to zero, right? We said that it will have two same real solutions. How will the parabola look like? The parabola will look like this, wherein it will just be touching the x-axis at one point. So it is not cutting the x-axis at two points, right? It is only touching it at one point, And this is the repeated solution in case when the discriminant is zero. In the third scenario, when the discriminant is less than zero or negative, the parabola will not cut the x-axis, right? It will not cut the x-axis. It will not touch the x-axis. Hence, we are saying that in that case, the function will have two unreal solutions or two imaginary solutions, right? We talked about in the past that if a function is having two degrees or basically a quadratic function, it will have two solutions. So even in this case, when the discriminant is less than zero, it will have two solutions, but unreal solutions, and hence it will not cut or touch the x-axis at all. 
Hopefully the video was helpful and it gave you a perspective in terms of understanding what is a discriminant and how do we use, how do we leverage discriminant. Remember, discriminant is very powerful and we can make a lot of inferences using discriminant. If you like the video, please do like and subscribe. See you in the next session.